In other words, what's the special <laughs> angle? Do you remember, Megan? No. No? What could it be? Root 2? Is it 1 over root 2? 1 over root 2? No, that's 45. But nice try. No, that's the tan. 1 over root 3. 1 over root 3? That is tan of, uh oh. That's tan 30. Root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. That's right. So the x component is root 3 over 2 times 50 newtons. And so the exact amount is 25 root 3. I'm going to go 25 times root 3 newtons is my x component. That, um, that's reasonable, correct? All right. Yeah. RJ, I want you to tell me the force in the y direction. Sine 30 times 50 newtons or cos 60. Sine 30 times uh, 50 newtons or the cosine of 60. Oh, you clever duck you. You're using the parallelogram law. I like that. Hey, RJ, sine of 30 is an exact quantity. All right, this one is. That's. Mm -hmm. So it's real, or root 3 over 1. No, that is the oh, sign. One over two. Yeah, there we go. One over two. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the component in the y direction is 25 newtons. That's brilliant. Okay. Um, yes. So if it was, but if it was co sixty, it would have been root three over one. Uh, the cosine, sorry, the cosine of sixty is one half. All right. The sine of sixty is root three over two. So as far as cosine and sine are concerned, all you have for special angles are root three over two. Sorry, his ratios are root 3 over 2, 1 half, and for the 45 degree triangle, 1 over root 2, and 1 over root 2. Or, yeah, yeah or, um, yeah, or root 2 over 2, which is the correct way to, uh, correct way to theoretically do it. Okay. Okay, let's do the, uh, Rant one. Just for the fun of it. Okay. Even though this isn't a 30 degree ramp, I'm warning you children, not everything is to scale. Okay, 30, 60. Yeah, that's more like 45, 45. Yeah. That's to make you think harder. <laughs> okay, I'll read to it. Thirty, sixty. There's our object sitting on the ramp, and uh, it's going to have a mass of two kilograms. RJ's texting. RJ's playing with the tape measure again. RJ. Hey, that's what I was thinking. Okay, um, what's the size of this vector that's going straight toward the ground? Who can tell me that? Nine point eight. Nine point eight times two. That's right. And so it's nineteen point six newtons. Okay. We want to break this into two components. We want to break it into Four, 
For those of you joining us from home, we want to break it into the force of gravity parallel to the ramp. And we want to break it into the force of gravity perpendicular to the ramp. And RJ, can you tell us the physics -y reason why we want to break it into the parallel and perpendicular components? The perpendicular, because that way we can calculate the normal force that the box is exerting on the ramp. And the force parallel is to point a. So yes, this is going to tell you how much the ramp is pushing back. So it's going to tell you the normal force. And the normal force can be used to calculate the force of friction. OK, and what is this component, the component parallel? What's that going to do to the box? It's going to, that's the force on it. That's what's going to cause it to accelerate, if it can move at all. OK, um, what's this angle in here? The one between the, the perpendicular and the force of gravity, what's that angle? What is 30? The answer, the question is, what is 30? That's right. And of course, the other one is 60. Good. OK. We said the angle here is, can you ask the question? So really quickly, both of you calculate the force perpendicular and the force parallel. And we'll move on to the next, even harder one. RJ is looking at me. Oh, no. I was looking at the board. Oh, he's looking at the board. <laughs> oh, finally, it was clear. I could not see anything. <laughs> oh, are you serious? And that's a, going to be a real hodgepodge because I've written timely. Can you see it okay, Meg? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You sure it's not your glasses? It was really. S yes. <laughs> Cosine of 30? One over one no, three over two. Let's ask a friend. Megan, what's the cosine of 30 as a fraction? It's root 3 over 2. It's root 3 Cosine of 60 is, <laughs> is uh, one half. Yeah. So remember your special triangles. One, 
two, three, three. What do you get for perpendicular, Meg? Hey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> What's the expression, RJ, for the force perpendicular? Uh, cos of 30 times the force of gravity. Yep, cos of 30 times the force of gravity. What perpendicular force are we talking about? We're talking about um, perpendicular to the box. So it's it's perpendicular to okay. the surface that the object is sitting on. And so the gravity okay, makes so this it, one. Uh, no, that's so okay. this one. This is the yeah, one that's yeah. parallel. This is the one that's perpendicular to the surface. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, and that's the And I can the perpendicular. <laughs> well, it could be perpendicular to anything, like the surface of the Earth. Front of the box, yeah. <laughs> back of the box, the ground, the yard, yeah. the, sun, the, sun, the person pushing the box. Three, three over two times, 19.6 newtons. And that parallel is going to be sine sin 30. 30. Oh, sine 30, sorry. It's sine 30, yeah. It always yeah. breaks into the same thing. Yeah. That's 19.6 newton. Gravity? You could do co 60, yeah. It'll work the same way because. Um, how does that yeah. work if you do the cosine of 60? Because it's still. Oh, the same because it's the adjacent side. Yep. Yeah. Works the same way. Okay. RJ, what's true about. A body that's in equilibrium. It is not moving. Correct. Well, no, actually, I guess it, if it's it in. It could be moving, but it's not. It's there. It's not accelerating in one direction or another. That's right. It's yeah. Constant. Yeah. So there's no net force on it. Basically, the force in every direction is the same. Okay. So. This is the challenge problem. It is the it is a disco ball problem. You got a disco ball for Christmas? Really? Santa must have hated him, eh? Okay. Megan disappeared. Are those 20 and 30 minutes? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> oh, those are degrees? Uh, what? Yeah, so those are degrees. Yep, we don't know. Hey, Meg. Oh, it's this kind of problem. <laughs> My internet abandons me. <laughs> the internet does that every once in a while. Yeah, it's, it has its rebellious traits. So this is um, <laughs> this is RJ's brother's problem, actually. He's hanging his disco ball from the ceiling. And it's uneven. We have a string between two two of those disco ball islets. And the angle between the string and the ceiling on the one side is 30 degrees. The angle between the string and the ceiling on the other side is 20 degrees. And RJ is texting again. Anyway, this disco ball weighs 12.5 kilograms. And it's holding still. So this this string is providing a force of tension in that direction. The string is providing a force of tension in that direction. And what is the missing vector? 
Is there something missing back there? Yeah, there is. There's something missing from here. Okay. No, you just want aliens and you said missing. And I wasn't sure what it was. Oh, okay. All right. So there's a force attention in this direction. Technically, that's the string that I've drawn. There's a force of tension in that direction. And there's the force of gravity, yeah, that's right. So the force of gravity is acting downwards. So let's call this one FT1. We're going to call that FT2. And then we're going to call this one FG. So this is equilibrium. Yes, that's right. So these are all essentially just, they're just physics problems. Okay. This is in equilibrium. That means the force is all balanced. That means when we add the vectors together, what needs to happen? They have to be zero. So when we add them together, the x zero force, the net force of x is zero. The net force of x is zero, and the net force of y is zero. That's right. Now there's a second way to look at it. Okay, the net force in the x and the y directions are all zero. But if we add our vectors tip to tail, what's going to happen? It's going to make a triangle. In other words, we are going to get exactly back, uh, back to exactly the same place that we started from. So the vectors basically all wind up giving us the zero vector. Okay, once again, not drawn to scale on purpose. What's the length of this vector? Or how do I calculate it? So yes, it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram times 12.5. <laughs> Megan keeps on abandoning us. That's 50. What's this one down here? I'm done. Oh, I mean, half of a. Uh, so it would be sine 20 times. Oh, what's the size of this angle right down here? Are you saying force 10 to 1, force 10 to 2 are equal? Uh, they, they don't actually have to be equal. Right, again, Megan? Well, no, I saw it's not very equal. It's not necessarily isosceles. No, it's definitely not isosceles because this is 20 and this is 30. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not isosceles. However. Uh, oh, I see. Right. Yeah. So that would make it 70 degrees? So this one's 70, right. So, Megan, by virtue of the fact that these are hanging from the ceiling, and um, and so uh, we have a 20 degree relative to the ceiling for FT1. We also know it's 30 degrees relative to the ceiling for FT2. And um, that those angles are both contained between the ceiling and the, and the vector. So we're able to say that this is 50 in our triangle, 
We're also able, to, because this is a perpendicular line, we can say this is a right angle triangle. We can say that means 70. And that's 120, so this one is, what's the size of this one, RJ? 30, 90. 120. 60. 60 degrees. Well, yeah. if you're increasing that one by 10, you have to decrease the other by 10. Okay, so RJ, the big question is what's this, FT1, and what's this one, FT2? So, really, the big question is how are we going to calculate the remaining two sides? Nope. Because this is not a perpendicular bisector. Remember, that's 20 and that, or that's 20 and that's 30. Mm. Coast law? Um, not in this case. Coast law won't work. Sign law will work. Yeah. Okay. So the sine of 50 divided by what? So sine A over A is equal to sine B over B is equal to sine C over C. So sine of 50 over 122.5, there's our calculatable quantity. It's equal to the sine of 70 over force tension 2. Okay. Which is equal to the sine of 60. Okay, in this case, really, um, sine 50 and sine 70, unless you're ready to use some nice compound angle formulas multiple times, um, you are going to wind up with fractions for this. Yeah. So, decimal? Decimal, yeah. Five. Definitely decimal. Megan, you've got a different background every time you come. 
What did you get for FT2, RJ? Uh, oh, not quite done? Okay. So which one? Oh, uh, do you have both of them? Yeah, so up to one. Okay. So if you want up to one or up to two? Give me up to one. Uh, one hundred thirty-eight point four nine minutes. Correct. And up to two? One hundred fifty-one. That is a piece of art right there. Good work. Okay, I'm gonna screen share. This is just. Real quick, we'll take a look at some homework. I'm sharing my screen with you. Okay. Find the angle between A and B. If vector A plus vector B plus vector C equals zero. So basically, when we add A, B, and C together, what should we wind up making? No, this is your homework for um, this this section. The triangle? It's going to make a triangle, that's right. So when you add A, B, and C together, you're going to end up exactly where you started. The resultant vector is the zero vector. So all this really is asking you is to calculate the remaining uh, the angle if you're given three side lengths. So um, with the exception of the first one, you're probably going to be using, well, what is that? That's a 5, that's a 5, 10, 11, yeah. The exception of the first one, which rule are you going to be using when you know three sides but not an angle? If it's not a right angle triangle. It's coastal? You will use the coast law. That's the right answer. Good for you. Okay, uh, number five is roughly the same thing. U, B, and W act on an object to produce equilibrium. In other words, we are going to get the zero vector when we add them all together. Uh, calculate the magnitude and direction of W given the other two. And so basically what you're doing is you're finding out um, the remaining side of these triangles and this one's north and this one's east, so what kind of a triangle are you making? What's that, RJ? Yeah, one of the vectors goes... So it's a right angle triangle, that's right. Pardon me, RJ? B is also a right angle triangle, that's right. Okay. So for tonight, let's do four through eight. Does that make sense? The number eight is just the uh, number eight is sort of a variation of the problem that we just did, the challenge problem. Sound okay? Um, and then there's a, also a velocity as a vectors uh, section, and I'm just going to leave that one for you guys to do because basically it's all the same thing. It's velocity instead of force, so all you're doing is taking vectors and adding them and finding the remaining side. Sound okay? We're exactly half an hour.
So Megan. Yep. Bye. Bye. Wave, RJ. Good luck at uh, good luck in Fredericton, or at least you know, have fun if nothing else. Thank you. Yeah, you'll meet lots of nice people. Are your folks gonna go? No, they're they're staying behind. They're just abandoning you, eh? Like they're not even going like for the final banquet or anything. No. Okay. Hey, I have an idea. You should take Miss Weaver with you. She's coming, kind of. <gasps>